How do we deal with loss of a person we love? First, by recognizing there is no right way. There is no right way to grieve. There is no right way to get over it. There is no right way to respond. As many different people as there are who pass away and as many different people as there are who have lost someone they love, there's as many different right ways to grieve as they are. The only way that is not right is to push away your feelings. Because we think somehow that if I push them away, they'll go away, which isn't true, unfortunately. Whatever you're feeling, whether it's in the loss of a loved one, whether it's anger, whether it's grudges, whether it's at any time in your life, feelings, emotions don't go away by pushing against them. They become assimilated and absorbed and therefore harmless to us and rather a, a beautiful part of a, a new piece of who we are when we're able to create space within us for them. So, ah, there's grief. There's sadness. There's loss. And be present with it. Be present with it. There will be tears. There will be anger. We think it should be just sadness, but frequently there's anger. How dare you leave me? How dare you not take better care of yourself? How dare you have gotten into a car without your seatbelt? How dare you, whatever it may have been. There's anger. There's anger at God. How dare you take my loved one? There's anger at people who haven't lost. How dare you smile? There's anger at the sun. How dare you rise? This is very, very natural. And so we just create space for it. But what we don't do with any of our emotions, and this is true whether you've lost a loved one or at any time in our life, is we don't hold on to them. Emotions are actually very, very fluid. They come, they tend to kind of wash over us, and then they dissipate. What makes them last very long is when we grab hold of them. When we wrap that emotion in the whole drama that goes along with it. And then that lasts. So try as much as you can to just stay with the pure emotion. When there's grief, there's tears, cry. There's anger, sit, close your eyes, allow the anger to be there. And what you'll find is one tends to flow into the other actually really quite quite quickly. First there's grief, then there's anger, then there's fear, what's going to happen to me? Then again, maybe there's pain, then again, maybe there's anger, then you know what, then there's joy. Because in the, in the sadness, a moment arises, you remember, a memory comes, and then there's joy, because you're there in the memory. And then maybe even you laugh, maybe it was a funny memory. The only problem that comes is when the mind comes in and says, how dare you smile? Your loved one just died. And we start to second guess how we feel. We start to judge how we feel. There is, there is an intelligence in us, an intelligence in the universe. Allow it to manifest, yeah. You're going to grieve. Create the space in yourself, in your life, in your day-to-day -day schedule. Give yourself time, literally, to grieve. Don't make yourself so busy that there's no time to grieve. And I don't mean you have to force it, but have quiet time. Sit. 
If grief doesn't come, fantastic. Allow poetry to come. Allow meditation to come. Allow something else to come. But create space and time in which whatever it is that's happening in you in that moment can come. The other piece, though, that goes along with that, along with the just acceptance of pure emotion, whatever it may be, is the awareness also that that which we had from the person, a lot of it is still with us, not all. You no longer can hold their hands, you no longer can sit in their lap, you no longer can look deeply in their eyes. And that's, that's a real loss. And that absolutely requires grieving. And the essence of who they are is actually still with you. And your love for them and your love with them is also still with you. Because that love lived within you. It didn't live in them. They catalyzed the love in you. They lit the fire of love in you. But that love lived within you. And the reason you know that is when they went out to the store or they took a trip for the weekend, you didn't feel any less love. There was no relationship between their physical presence or distance and your experience of love. If it was in them, not in you, the farther away they got, the less love you would feel. This AC is great. It gives us cool air. Our beautiful rivers sitting in the back under it are getting the most cool air. I'm getting the least cool air. I'm the farthest from it. The rest of you are getting some amount of it in between. If I walk out that door, I'm going to get less. You walk to the other side of that wall, you're not even going to know there's an AC on. Because it's in that machine. It's not in me. But with love, it doesn't happen like that person gets up, they go in the kitchen, they go to the store, they go to work, they go on a trip. You don't feel any less love. It's in you. We only feel that less love. We panic when they leave us, whether they've abandoned us in a divorce or in a just left us in that way or whether they've left their body entirely. In any of those circumstances, that's when we start to feel less love. But the truth is that love has always been in you. So whether they are still in their physical body, but they have said, I don't love you anymore, or whether they are no longer in a physical body, in both cases, the love you felt is still in you. They haven't done anything to surgically remove it. They haven't siphoned the love out of you. They couldn't. It's impossible. And so along with creating the space to grieve the loss of their physical presence, we also remember that actually that love is still in me, and I can still tap into it, and I can still love it. I can still live in love, even if I don't have that person catalyzing it anymore, because it's still in me. The fire is still burning. So allow yourself to, to sit in that and to experience the love, and not to have the mind play mind games of, oh, they've left you, now you don't have any love, they've taken your love and gone. No, they haven't. They've taken their physical body and gone. They've taken the joy that you got from looking at them or touching them. But the love is still in you. And don't let your mind convince you any, any differently. So both of those together we practice. Because they're both real. Just on slightly different levels of existence. <laughs>